Hello, everybody. My name is Rick McCutcheon. I'm a Dynamics 365 MVP, and I'm here to host this expert panel today for MS Dynamics World and iTrack 365 on leveraging environmental health and safety, also known as EHS, processes with Microsoft Dynamics 365 and the Power Platform. Well, folks, we have one uh, all-star cast here today on this panel. I'm sure they're going to give us some great insights. So I'm going to let them introduce themselves, and I'm going to turn it over to you first, Trevor. Hi, my name is Trevor Demigiers. I am the uh, Managing Director of iTrack365. Uh, we're a, a software provider. We provide software solutions for the EHS industry um, based on the Microsoft uh, cloud technologies. Okay, thank you, Trevor. Over to you, Chris. Hello, I'm Chris McPherson. I'm a senior advisor, health and safety with Strathcona Resources, and I've been a professional EHS uh, person for the last 11 years managing health safety environment at our company. Okay, thank you. And Mark? Hi everyone, my name is Mark Ferrugia. I'm here representing Strathcona County um, as a consultant project manager. So I'm currently working with the county to help them implement the iTrack 365 power platform solution. Okay, thank you. And lastly, over to you, Felix. Hi, I'm Felix Covitai, CEO of XRM Vision. We are uh, an organization of 80 people implementing solution based on the uh, Dynamics 365 platform from Microsoft. Okay, thank you. So let's get started. And the first question I'm going to go to, to you first, Chris. Um, tell us about the use cases for environmental health and safety, also known as EHS software, and the benefits to organizations. Chris. Thank you for the question and um, pleasure to be here today. Um, my role as an EHS professional is obviously to uh, design, implement, and, and continuously improve the health, safety, environmental processes within our companies. And, you know, being able to lean on software such as the, the Dynamics 365, iTrack, and Power Platform allows us uh, that ability to, you know, complete, track, analyze, and report out uh, those health, safety, environment metrics and requirements. Um, you know, our current uses include incident management, uh, tracking of hazard IDs and inspections, um, you know, meetings, recording meetings, and, and doing things like job observations. So, um, yeah, this software is uh, absolutely huge for us to be able to implement. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Mark, would you like to add anything? Yeah, absolutely. In the case of the county, um, it's quite an interesting use case because the county uh, is actually currently on paper-based systems um, or paper-based processes, I should say. So the introduction of um, the iTrack 365 uh, power platform solution is this is really a transition from you know uh, paper-based rather manual work uh, to a more centralised, digitised solution, uh, which will obviously bring along all the benefits that Chris just mentioned as well. Um, and something that the county not only really needs but is really looking forward to at this point in time. Okay, perfect, Felix. I will uh, complete that the uh, capturing data is key to understand the uh, EHS, uh, uh, the way it works and uh, to have data on that. And this is part of the prevention, but also to find where to put uh, specific uh, action to fix it. Okay, thank you. And Trevor? Yeah, you know, EHS processes and use cases are pretty broad. Um, they affect, um, uh, a whole range, and you know, Chris, I think you outlined a, a, a lot of great examples. Um, I think, Mark, your journey of, of coming from paper into digitized is is, is really important. Um, and and you know what you talk about, Felix, in terms of bringing field information forward and, and and capturing data. Really, at the end of the day, EHS is about effectively helping the operations of a company embed safety into what they're doing. Um, that's really so it's it's a really broad suite of different processes, but when it's working and really adding maximum value to a company, it's helping them operationally work more efficiently, but also take care of some of the core things that keep people safe and keep, uh, you know, organizations compliant with regulations on, on how to do that. And Trevor, if I can just add something, I remember the first time I saw your application, probably three or four years ago now, being a, you know, a CRM guy. 
um, I, I really it sort of opened my eyes to how big an application EHS actually is within an organization and how important that data is. And I think the use case for bringing it into the Power Platform is uh, an absolutely you know, core solid one. Absolutely, and and you know you'll see power apps, um, you know, and with lots happening in the power app um, community right now, people will be building power apps for an inspection, a vehicle inspection, small little applications. Um, that's awesome. We love seeing that. But ultimately, what we believe that really achieves what companies want to achieve is when you tie that all together. When you tie that together across the organization to give them visibility. And uh, yeah, there's a lot to it. There's no question. Um, uh, you know, there's there's a uh, um, we've been at this for 10 years on the CRM platform. Okay, great. Okay, Mark, I'm going to ask you the next question. We'll start with you. So last year, organizations were blindsided by this pandemic. How did they deal with the health and safety management when the workplaces physically shifted and new regulations came into place overnight? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think um, it's interesting that you started with me because, you know, the, at, at that time, um, there was no centralised digital solution in place for the county. Uh, they are still operating off-bed paper-based processes. So, you know, first and foremost, what I can say is, regardless of systems, the sheer tenacity and commitment of the people involved um, is ultimately, you know, what, what, the, what the biggest factor was at that time. Um, however, in the county's case, it was a lot more difficult for those folks because they didn't have a system like iTrack 365. Um, to really help ease some of the pain. Um, so it was a very manual process. Again, um, really only pulled off through sheer tenacity and commitment by the staff involved. Um, you know, as, as things progress through this pandemic and um, hopefully we're on the tail end of it, but if something was to happen like this again in the future, I feel the county will be in a much better position to pivot, um, again, by having that digital centralised solution in place. Okay, thank you. Uh, Felix, would you like to add anything? I would say that many of our clients are uh, add to manage a lot of changes in procedures, data to capture, new, totally new processes to, uh, to handle. And having technologies in place like iTrack is helping to uh, streamline these uh, movement uh, and to accelerate the capacity to implement these new processes, to train user to gathered information and being updated on that, as well as to uh, recuperate the data from the field to make sure that they are able to implement or improve procedures and way to do that and cycle to the next iteration. And iterations were often extremely fast cause of the pandemic uh, uh, imposing uh, a fast pace from uh, improvement uh, in different organizations. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm gonna go over to you next, Trevor, but I also remember when the pandemic started, how quickly your team was able to come up with sort of COVID-related applications and roll them out to your customers. So maybe we can talk a little bit about that. Yeah, we, we um, what happened when COVID really started to showcase is we've spent a lot of our careers in, in an area we call hard hats and steel toed boots, you know, high risk energy or high risk industries um, like energy, like mining, like construction. And what we really saw happen with COVID is a shift towards uh, what we call medium risk industries, where they started to see the virus presenting a very real risk to their operations. And, um, you know, we don't have to spend any time on that. We all know that. We've been living it for two years. Um, but yeah, the ability to react is is really a critical part of this, is um, you don't know what's coming sometimes, and certainly COVID is showing us that, but we see that in all parts of our business and how the world is being digitally kind of uh, changed up. And uh, and you want to have an infrastructure of platform and tools to allow you to adapt to that. And uh, so, yeah, we see people start with, oh, hey, I got to do a return to work. Um, you know, we've been doing that in the Microsoft Power Platform. You see that. That's just the tip of the iceberg. You start finding now you got people working at home. Now, maybe you need them to do a little inspection to make sure that they're actually using the right kind of equipment and they got their desk so you don't find that you've got, you know, 2,000 employees complaining about back problems. You want to make sure wellness is managed. So there's just, there's a whole bunch of different things, but it comes down to the ability to be fast and the ability to give and react with um, process tools that kind of have the processes and that you want to mandate for your business 
embedded in them and getting them to people quickly so that you could start to get that data back. Okay, thank you. Chris, would you like to add anything? The only thing I would add is that, you know, obviously when a lot of the regulations changed and, you know, we had to put a bunch of things in place overnight, you know, just technology in general, you know, Microsoft Teams, for example, uh, allowed us to immediately continue our business while maintaining social distancing and that, uh, you know, things like VPNs and remote desktop logins and that also assisted with the continuity piece to keep the business running. So, um, you know, I think that that was, that was definitely important. You know, um, we were also exploring a lot of different ways that we could move the needle on, you know, uh, using power apps to potentially track and trace people, um, you know, if they were in our offices, you know, signing in and out um, for contact reasons and contact tracing. So, yeah, there, it definitely, it made it a little trickier to manage the health and safety but I think overall, you know, the technology has really helped quite a bit with um, with a lot of that. Okay, thank you, Chris. Um, over to you next, Felix. Um, and we're still seeing, you know, many companies today with standalone systems, siloed systems, you know, health and safety systems that are 25 years old and, you know, have been patched together and we're still kind of running them. So, um, Felix, how difficult is it to manage EHS policies and procedures without, you know, business applications like iTrack 365? For older solutions that are either on paper or on old technology, it's really difficult to adapt to the new use cases that were faced, we have fa been faced in the, uh, in the, uh, during the pandemic and during any kind of evolution. And going on that would be kind of a lot of time to document, then transfer, then train people. And this process, is uh, preventing the adapt the quick adaptation on that, and the use case were so different than they were uh, having before. Then it was uh, with older systems, uh, it was very difficult because the cycle to uh, change and to evolve were very long. With the Power Platform, with iTrack, it is possible to be extremely precise and evolve and some clients were kind of required to have evolution and business rules or processes every one, three, or four weeks because of the evolution of the knowledge in the, the procedures. So it was possible to follow these uh, these requirements because they were aligned on that. Okay, thank you. Felix, Trevor, would you like to add anything? You know, I think that um, uh, there's some key points when you talk about, you know, implementing different procedures and 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 policies with EHS, you want to tap in. One of the key things is tapping into other parts of your organization, um, knowing information. What kind of assets do you have? What kind of processes do you already have? Where are your people resources? What skills do they have? What training? You know, you're really trying to manage all of that together. So that's, that's really, um, you know, when you start to look at things like, you know, EHS and these kind of solutions, it's really packaging that all up that's, that's, that's the power. Um, and when you get that kind of holistic view across the organization into that data, across all these systems with an underlying platform with it, um, again, that's where you're gonna reap some of the values. Okay, thanks. Um, we're gonna go to you next, Chris, and maybe you can talk a little bit about a procedure you did manually at one time that you now do with iTrack. Yeah, no, I think anybody who is a health safety environment professional knows that in every office there's uh, boxes and boxes of paperwork that gets generated from, you know, people filling out paper-based documents, right? There's, you know, the, the downside of that is, you know, how do you count it? How do you get any insight from it? How do you any track to see who's done what and what actually needs to be followed up on, right? So, you know, moving to more of an application like iTrack 365, you break all those barriers down, right? Having all those processes in a single place optimizes the, and makes things efficient. Um, you know, it speeds up the end user's day. You know, I, I always use the example of there's no more, you know, scanning, emailing to yourself, attaching to a folder, you know, to do these things. It's just all automated. And, uh, you know, there's better tracking, there's better accountability. Um, I, I come from, you know, my company, uh, when we had the original iTrack, half of our company didn't use it um, because they were trying to be more efficient and, and things like that. And it actually made it harder to get any insight as to what they were actually doing. So it, it sort of made things harder on, on the business. So 
so yeah, I would I would say that to, without applications like iTrack 365, you could be uh, you could be missing out on things that can really help your business in a lot of different ways. Okay, thank you. So Mark, you're kind of in the transition period right now, from getting a lot of these applications up up and running. Talk about some of the um, procedures that you now manage uh, with iTrack previously in, in a paper based system. Yeah, actually, um, we're still in the middle of rolling out our track, so we haven't actually got it in production yet. But what I would like to add to this conversation is, um, you know, a, def a definite benefit we're going to see is with training and onboarding and, and a real risk mitigation with something going wrong um, on the paper-based processes, because I think that is a, a real risk that is present with paper-based processes where, you know, with a large organisation like the county, um, you're at risk of people doing things different ways, regardless of how it's written down in a document. Um, so this is the risk that we really anticipate iTrack to mitigate um, by, through the automation of the workflows and also just the very fact that everybody will be using the same tool um, so that workflow should be very consistent throughout the organisation. Okay, thank you. Now for our two end user customers, Chris and Mark, Let's talk a little bit about, you know, the procedure you went through and the selection process for an EHS solution. Let's start with you, Chris. Our selection process, you know, obviously we need to be unbiased when we go, when we went to select iTrack 365. You know, we, we had an already previous relationship since 2004 using Neosystems and iTrack 365. So, you know, we, we, we definitely have strong front runner, you know, there was a comfort level, um, but we also have a lot of other people's eyes on the, on this evaluation saying, you know, have you been unbiased? So, you know, obviously we looked at a number of different solutions. Um, you know, there are a lot of solutions out there that I would say have EHS processes as more of a bolt on, you know, as an additional feature to their suite of solutions that they, that they sell or provide. Whereas iTrack 365 is is grounded in true EHS processes, you know, um, there's there's definitely familiarity. They understand the whole risk management platform, whether it's the training, the competency, the quality, the safety. So, um, you know, it was important to us also to have integrations. You know, build, the ability to integrate with already existing tools like Azure and Office and Teams and things like that. So, you know, there that that also made it. Um, a bit of a of a win for us when during the evaluation process. Okay, thank you. Would you like to add anything, Mark? Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the thing, one of the keys to to the selection process, uh, particularly in a municipality, which has to be uh, also unbiased, like Chris uh, Chris mentioned, is the amount of effort that went into our selection process, and really that effort was. Um, a lot around making sure that the county understood what it was looking for. And the way that it tried to understand that best way possible was actually to develop, take the time to understand current processes and develop future state processes. And that was really key um, in, you know, assisting to make sure that the right vendor was selected um, throughout the selection process. Okay. Mark, I just, Rick, if I may for a moment, Mark, can you speak a little bit to the, like the time? Because I, I found it fascinating how the municipality, you know, you guys spent a number of years building those those processes even before you went to the RFP process. And certainly as, as the vendor, we, we uh, understood the, you know, seven month RFP evaluation and the extent that, that went. Um, but like the, that journey is not something you did in three months. Yeah, no, exactly. And, you know, um, some of that is due to the processes that we have to follow, but honestly, a big chunk of it was due to the, the effort put in to make sure that the current state and the future state processes were understood. Um, and that was really based on some lessons learned on some other projects that the county has, um, you know, ha had gone into without that full understanding. And without that full understanding of the desired future state, it's high risk when you're spending public money and taking up the time of a lot of um, public servants, essentially. Um, so, you know, in some ways, it's it's put the time up front um, to mitigate that risk over time to make sure that the implementation is the right implementation the first time around. 
Okay, thank you, Mark. So the next question, uh, it's gonna go back over to you, Trevor. How important was the fact that iTrack 365 is based on the Microsoft Cloud Platform? And maybe there's two parts to this because historically you guys have built on this platform. Why did you pick this platform? And then why do you continue to grow on it? Yeah, that, that's um, a, a very careful kind of evaluation. We've been in this area around health and safety for you know almost 30 years and uh, had a previous platform uh, as Chris uh, you know talked about. When we decided to replatform that, we started that journey in 2010. Um, and 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 that was long before cloud platforms. That was long before you know the cloud and, and kind of the approaches of and even some of the new language of things like Power Automate and Power Platform, Power BI, were existed. Um, and we we at that time started to look at some technology trends that we were starting to see from customers. So this is really rooted in in what we were evaluating they were doing. And um, and fast forward you know um, to where we are today. We see a lot of companies, um, the plethora of technology and tools is overwhelming. There's just so much out there. And they have to have some criteria by which they start to say, you know, they, they, they narrow down that category of applications. And um, I think that when Microsoft provides a platform underlying, companies can have comfort in that. They choose that. And they might not all choose Microsoft, lots of them do. But when they choose that, now they're saying, look, how can I extend that more? I've already chosen that investment. How can I build on it? And that was something that we started to see coming four or five years ago. We started to see companies actually choosing based on the core platform, putting industry solutions on top. So that's, again, how we've kind of started to accelerate our investment because we said, look, we get the, we're literally standing on the, the shoulders of giants is how we talk about it. We've got this platform underpinning everything we do, but then we can bring the industry expertise, the things that Chris and Mark were talking about that's really important because a platform by itself sometimes doesn't service the need of risk management or incident management or you know job safety analysis or, or whatever the, the pro specific process might be. And uh, that change in, in behavior was something that we felt uh, um, we could we could really add a lot of value to. Okay, thank you, Trevor. So, Felix, from the perspective of a Microsoft partner who's implementing iTrack 365, how important was it, you know, for your organization to work with a product that was on Power Platform? I, I would say two things. First, on the user adoption, if you have a user that is that is using different kind of uh, part or application of the uh, Microsoft environment or Microsoft Cloud, he is used to have these kind of integration and interaction. So having another solution that is uh, developed or built on the same platform make it much easier to integrate, understand, and use on a daily basis. So from a user adoption, it helps to have a uh, better uh, users of the solution. On the second part is the fact that the data is integrated across these application from Microsoft is the fact that you're able to capture data from different systems and mix them to have a better insights or to be able to transfer, let's say, a case that has been to, uh, captured in a uh, conference, uh, in a, in a call center and transfer it to a, a health and safety team that will figure out the situation and the solution. And having these integration from uh, the, and being on the same platform makes these integration much easier to uh, implement and to uh, use on a daily basis. Okay, thank you, Felix. Chris, over to you. Let's talk a little bit about, you. how do you feel about the platform? Felix, you took the words right out of my mouth. Like uh, everything, you know, the login fatigue, the software fatigue, this, that ability to just log in and see some familiarity with the Power Platform sort of format. Uh, that that is again, it's all about the end user for us. Uh, you know, we we as an HSC team absolutely need a tool that that does HSC. But we're you know to Felix's point, we're looking at you know we've got we manage vendor lists in SharePoint. You know, and we can pull that vendor list out of there into directly into iTrack via the Dataverse and say. Okay, show us approved vendors now on our incident forms, you know, things like that. that those integrations are going to speed up our ability to learn more information about our um, processes and, uh, and make it easy and more user-friendly to our end users. So 
it's a terrific uh, it's a terrific platform and uh, i'm excited to i would say i'm excited to see what corporately we will do and what other corporations will be doing to kind of encompass the whole suite in a in a in a meaningful way okay thank you chris mark would you like to add anything yeah, absolutely. Uh, we had two really what I think is uh, very interesting situations at the county um, related to the use of the power platform and specifically the Dataverse. Um, and that first situation was when we first started working with Trevor and his team, you know, as a PM, one of my biggest kind of worries at kickoff is, OK, you know, how, how quickly is it going to take IT to um, do the necessary installs and get the system up and running so we can start configuring something? And uh, Trevor and I actually had a good laugh over this because we were pretty sure we broke the world record on that. Um, because our IT team was working with technology they were already familiar with, um, I kid you not, we were up and running uh, with a system that was ready to be configured, and I think it was three days from kickoff. Um, so, so that was um, something that just blew me away at the time. <laughs> um, and the second thing was, once, once we did get kicked off and started configuring and the word got out there um, that um, we were implementing the iTrack 365 throughout the organisation, um, still today I, I probably get inquiries once every few weeks about, oh, um, you know, can we, can we look at the data you guys are storing in your dataverse and potentially access it? So the information that uh, Felix and Chris mentioned about integrations, absolutely seeing that. Um, and the county really sees this as a great trigger to get a better handle on the source of truth of data and where that data is sitting throughout the organization. Okay, thank you. So panelists, there's gonna be many people watching um, this panel and they're sitting on a pile of paper and they're saying, okay, that's fine for you to say, how do I get started? So let's go around the room and let's talk a little bit about how we can help these people actually get started. Chris, what do you suggest? Suggest. Well, first off, you know, if I was if I was called in to, to assist a, a company or an organization with moving away from paper based, uh, you know, at first I'd I'd want to understand, you know, why, um, what it is in their company that that they're missing. You know, so I, you know, what are their, what are their, seek to understand, you know, what their needs are, you know, how they manage their processes today and, and then start to build out, you know, what's missing and what do they want to do. I think that those are, are important to understand what they don't like before you can tell them and what they do before you can tell them how you can do it differently. Um, you know, I think that would be a, probably where I would start. Okay, great. Thank you. Mark, would you like to add anything? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I really see there's three key things. Uh, three key things, and first thing is understand current state. Second thing is understand future state. But most importantly, the third thing, understand the difference between the two, um, because that is what will drive the change management and the user adoption of of the solution that you're implementing. Um, it, it'll just it, it'll make the whole change management a lot easier. And that's really key to ensuring that what you're implementing is absolutely relevant um, to the folks that have to use it. Okay, thank you, Mark. Um, Felix, would you like to add anything? I would add that on top of what Chris and uh, Mark are saying, making sure that we understand or you understand as an organization why you're doing the things, because maybe it's an occasion to do things differently. And when you bring technology in and you have a solution that is super focus on specific processes, sometimes it is a good uh, moment to get inspired by these processes that are already automated, already kind of validated on as best practices and things like that, and tune it a little bit to get to the why and not try to reproduce exactly what you were doing on paper. It is possible, but sometimes there's a kind of a, a level of improvement that is possible just by following the best practices that are brought with an existing solution that has been tested over and over. Okay, thank you, Felix. Trevor, over to you. How would you help this poor person sitting with the paper? You know, I think that I, I, um, I think there's a lot of ways that you can start, frankly. Uh, I think the, the key is that you do start. Um, I would say also that, you know, start to understand some of the processes in your business that need visibility. 
when you see this kind of application end to end work together, what what really is is the the stunning part is when I meet with one of our customers and I meet with a, a board member or I meet with the senior executive and they say we're not fighting about the data the sources of the data five guys coming to a meeting or five people coming to a meeting and fighting over which spreadsheet is right they're actually trying to make the strategic decision about what they're doing differently um, or, or what they're trying to do as a business based on data that they know and trust that's an evolution um, you're not going to get there day one you're not going to start one process and that's not a magic bullet but start with things where you can start to find high visibility data um, high, and it may be around something that's obviously safety related, operationally related, that there's a lot of stakeholders who want to see that and that there's repetitiveness to it as well. So if you get that in, you start showing that and they see that end to end process working from, hey, now I know what those field people are doing. I know what those people, those frontline workers are doing and senior management and, and all the way through the organization has that visibility. Then you'll start to have aha moments. And these aha moments will start to drive and you'll have a lineup of people coming to to you know chris's offices and mark's offices going i want my process next i want this process next um so i don't know that there's one magic one to start but i think those are some of the characteristics that would choose help you choose which one's right for your organization okay thank you trevor and i want to thank our panel for um uh, this very interesting conversation on ehs and uh Again, thank you for your time. And I'm going to turn the last slide over to Trevor so he can talk to you about getting EHS digital transformation right and tell you how iTrack 365 can help your organization succeed. Yeah, thanks, Rick. And and thanks for everybody for participating and 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 sharing their viewpoints. Um, you know, there's a there's a dramatic change happening, um, you know, with technology adoption across many industries, and safety is no different. Um, and there's literally hundreds and hundreds of systems and I don't envy people who have to make the choice. Chris and Mark, when you guys have to make those selections, it's a lot of hard work. And, and I guess, you know, as we go through that journey, we try and put out, you know, some of the characteristics that we think are important. We think um, companies have made major investments in Microsoft. They've made investments because they need to know that there's security. They need to know that there's integration. They need to have the competence of the cloud and the uptime. They need to integrate with Teams and Outlook and you know uh, Power Automate and, and and all of the tools, Power BI. So that's that's where we 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 think we can help them. Um, that's where we believe that we're different in that space. And uh, you know when companies fully implement and and Mark and and they're you know in the municipality 2,500 users using this system that's the place we've got other organizations that have implemented across that many people with 70 to 80 percent of them using the tool every day that to us is success and then the success is also built on the people having the visibility. Um, like I said, around senior management and others who can can really look at their business and see it differently. So this is not about safety the way it used to be, in my opinion, which was we're buying a system for the safety department to use and for 20 or 30 people, and it's kind of there. This is about embedding safety and the in, into the core operations of your business. Those things are totally synonymous, safety and operations. You're trying to help people be safe or help to, trying to operate more efficiently, and you're trying to leverage your technology investments in your company. So we look, uh, we love opportunities to help people when we can to to do that. And uh, you know, thanks, Rick, for having us here today to to talk a little bit more about that. Okay, thank you, Trevor, uh, and thank you, gentlemen, for your insights. And have a great day. Thank you, Pierce. See you later. Thank you, guys.